were some intangibles that those projections failed to take into consideration. The crowd was going crazy. And there's not much in life that's better than that. You're listening to Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys with Mark Willard and Joe Shasky on the 95.7 The Game Podcast Network. Okay, hey, what's going on? Next episode of Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys, and we're coming to you after the end of a 2-6 and six road trip, a sweep at the hands of the Minnesota Twins. And, uh, and Joe, what feels like, and Mark Willard, Joe Shasky with you as always, um, look, even the most... Uh, even the biggest optimist, this felt like the nail in the coffin type of a um, of a road trip for the Giants. And so there's a couple conversations, I think, to have. One of them, which we will have, is about A, the offseason, and B, how do you handle the rest of this season? But before we get to that, I want to dive into something that I've noticed all year, a psychological dynamic, if you will, amongst Giants fans. Because there's something about this Giants team that really angers people. And it's not the worst record we've ever seen. Like we've been, every fan has been through losing seasons. And and we don't even know that this is going to end with a losing record. Um, But for whatever reason, this is as angry as I've seen Giants fans since before Buster, Timmy, Mad Bum, Oh, since before all of them arrived. Why do you think that is? I think that this team lacks one true player that everyone is inspired and has hope for. I, we all like, you know, uh, Logan Webb, and, and he's really exciting when he's pitching, but he's not, like, on the same level of fervor the way Lincecum was. Before that, you had Barry Bonds. I mean, really, this feels like the most, quote-unquote, hopeless team that they've had since, like, 1992. When Will Clark was hurt and Kevin Mitchell got traded away and it felt like they had one foot out the door. Like, Mark, look at their everyday roster, okay? I like Duvall. I still don't know what he is. Logan Webb is – he's more blue collar. He's not the sexy Tim Lincecum. Who's the guy that you look for and you're like, can't wait to see him do anything on a baseball field? There isn't one. So, like – I mean, I mean, Rodon sometimes, but, like – uh, this is part of even the psychology of watching Carlos Rodon uh, because of the way the contract is structured. Exactly. And maybe this is a bigger kind of a question for the way that the, the, the current front office goes about their business. He doesn't feel like he's ours. No, well, he doesn't feel like I- he's ours. Like we've, we've even, you know, three weeks ago, we thought he might get dealt uh, even at the deadline. Then he doesn't yeah. get dealt the deadline. And everyone's like, well, he's going to leave at the end of the year. So it's just like, I don't know. You feel like you feel like he's a visitor. Well, and don't you also feel like when I'm watching this this kind of rotation of castoffs, I almost feel like a lot of people, especially the, the older guys that they brought back, we feel almost duped by the, the season that we had last year. And I think that everybody's kind of like, shame on me for believing that last year they were going to, no, I'm serious. It's like yeah. in a relationship where you feel like you've been scorned by the opposite um, partner and you, you, you got back together or whatever happened and then boom, they did it again to you. We were waiting so long to get off the contracts of Longoria and Crawford and Belt. And then they had a magical season that lasted. It was like that little, that little vacation you go on in a relationship. Hey, it'll be different this time. And then boom, you get back to normal work life and it happens again. Yeah. Well, I think you're tapping into something, which is that a, the season is frustrating. Here's the obvious answer. The season's frustrating because of the expectations that last year built. But here's another way to say it. This year makes us feel like we were fools last year. Um, And I, I, I've said this a hundred times and I will go to the grave with this. I do not use the F word. I don't think there is such thing as a fluke that leads to 107 wins. That's not, that's not possible. You can't be bad and trip and fall into 107 wins more than any Giants team has ever had. That's a silly thought. But this year's performance does make us feel like what we were watching last year was at minimum not as real as we thought it was. Yeah. So we feel stupid. Yeah. You, you, you feel stupid. You said it. We feel duped. And while I'm talking about feeling stupid, here's another piece to what I think really is hard for Giants fans this year. Last year, you watched them win 107 wins. And so when a front office and a manager sort of have an air of, we know what we're doing. 
uh, you go, yeah, you, I guess you do. I don't really get what it is, but you're right. You do. Then this year you are, you, you are turning out a poor product yet. Your message is still "Ah, you silly fan. We know what we're doing. Yeah. Well, that's a really hard message for people to receive when we're watching what we're watching. So you, you think there's a, a tinge of arrogance and maybe not reading the room in terms of the fan base's frustrations and at least kind of like giving them an answer in a podium that they want to hear, even though you know it's not going to really change much? I do, and this is coming from someone who you well know. Like, I really wow. support this group. I do yeah. think they're smart. I do, do think they've got the right idea. I do think that there have been some things in their control they've messed up. I think there are some things that were out of their control uh, that, that should be acknowledged, but I support them, but they have to know, like whenever you're speaking, you and I do this on a daily basis. If you're speaking to an audience, you're responsible for how that message lands. Yeah. You just are. Yeah. And, and no matter what you're trying to say, even if you're right, if, if your message comes across as like snooty, like, yeah, we know baseball and you don't. And that's why what you see is kind of irrelevant. Here's what we see. Mm. But it's like, but it's not working. No. So you don't get to do that. So this this air of, of intelligence was fine last year, but it's really setting people off this year. Yeah, no, I, I think you're spot on with this. And the thing that I find really interesting is that it just feels like to me, Giants fans are the angriest they've been in such a long time. Yep. And the thing I keep coming back to Last year, you felt like it was a huge step forward. And in most situations, okay, we're building towards something. And I think not only did you take a huge step back this year, but it's as if you're not building toward anything. And actually, the final destination is significantly farther than what we thought it was. Yeah, absolutely. And then you have to also, uh, I think, uh, my experience certainly is also to look what's going on right alongside the Giants while this is happening, because it does feel like last year was two steps forward when you were only hoping for one. And this year you were hoping for one and you got two or three steps backward. And while that's happening, the Padres are acquiring Juan Soto and the Dodgers. Joe, last year, the Giants and Dodgers both set their franchise record for wins in the same year, 107 and 106. The Dodgers only need to go 19 and 17 the rest of the way to match what the Giants did last year and break their own franchise record. The Dodgers are so damn good. You're shocked if they lose once in a week. And so when you're looking at what the Giants are doing and what they have to do, it feels like all of the sudden we have this massive mountain in front of us that needs to be climbed it feels in this moment insurmountable anytime soon. And you look at like your two games, I think up on the dot, the diamondbacks right now. Why do they feel more hopeful than where the giants are at? And because, then you, because they got three of the top 10 prospects in baseball. That's why. Exactly. Exactly. And then you look at the, uh, the Padres who you're looking up at the standings at and, and they acquire Soto, even though they've had a, a horrific year in terms of headlines and crazy things that have happened I think they've kind of underperformed, if we're being honest. Yes. And you feel far away from them. And so I think it's just really frustrating. The other thing I was thinking about is the Dodgers beat you in the playoffs, okay? They beat you in the playoffs. Now, they didn't get the ultimate goal of winning it all. And they upgraded. They added Freddie Freeman, right? And so you, you combine all of these things, Mark, all of these things in there, and it's just a gut punch. And I keep going back to this. We, myself, at the very beginning of the line, man, I underestimated the Buster Posey effect in general, the sure, calming presence sure. that this guy brought. I'm not giving him all the credit. I think people have overcorrected and given him a lot of credit. But, boy, he was part of the championship makeup and the accountability and the DNA that you absolutely have to have going through the grind of a 162-game season. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, look, when people say that's the whole reason, it's like his war is not 30 <laughs> Okay, like it's not right. He'd be the greatest player in the history of the world if he's the difference between 107 and 77. That's a little out of whack. But 
I will tell you this, and I should have thought of it. You know, last year, spring training or early in the season when the Giants were playing well, I had a number of players say to me, you have no idea how different it was just to have Buster walk into the building mm -hmm. from the previous year when he opted out of the pandemic. So like, you, like they couldn't even put words to it, but they're like, I wish I could explain to you how different it is for all of us that he's here. And so therefore, why wouldn't we expect it to be difficult again when he walked back out of the room? So that's absolutely a dynamic. Plus, and this leads me to sort of my, my, my last point about why this team is so maddening. Buster played in such a professional way. Everything about him was just so damn, right? You're just okay yeah. if he struck out. Like you never looked at Buster and went, what the hell were you thinking? What are you doing there? Yeah, it's not that this team is losing. It's the way they're losing. A hundred percent. There is so many games where you're like, where are you throwing it? Why can't you catch it? Why can't you do something right situationally? It, there, there's so many things uh, all the way down to the Saturday night game in Minnesota with the ninth inning rally by the twins where that throw from Yaz, A, it was thrown to third and you're thinking, why are you throwing to third? But then I actually think he saw something where the runner got held up between second and third. And if you let that throw go through, the game is over nice. and Crawford cuts it off. There's no communication. Nobody even seemed to think about what had just transpired. It just feels like a team that's a step slow mentally. And yeah. just not. And, and that is so hard to watch because well, it just, it feels like, like that translates to a fan as like lack of caring. I know they do care, but that's how it feels to a fan. Luis Gonzalez base running mistakes. Yes. Uh, you know, time and time and time and time again. Yastrzemski, Benny Pitch ran for the other day. He's the pinch runner. He gets picked off a of second base. Where are you going? Junis colliding with the guy at first base today. Like it's always something every single day. And then the other part. So. There's the fundamentals. They are screwing up on the fundamentals. And I think Giants fans, look, the Bochy era, they weren't going to be out fundamentaled. Like, at the minimum, they might be outplayed. They might be outmanned. They weren't going to be out fundamentaled. The other part of this is, and this is where I struggle with it, and this is why I have the biggest problem with the Farhan regime as a whole. The analytics, the numbers, playing those cards, it worked brilliant last year. I can't take it away. But I struggle, and I think a lot of Giants fans struggle, Form. What about their form? Who is in form? J.D. Davis gets acquired to the Giants. Wow, I think we got something here. And then he hits a couple of home runs. I'm thinking, you know, you got to find a spot for this guy every day. He doesn't play for like five or six days. And there goes his form. He's out. Mike Yastrzemski, okay? I know that they have no outfielders right now. He's got a calf injury. He's in the four hole yesterday. This guy is as cold as can be, and he's in the four hole. And I'm listening to the logic in the post game. They're like, well, he has great numbers against Sonny Gray, you know, uh, going back throughout his entire time. He's got three at bats against Sonny Gray like five years ago or whatever it was. Like, <laughs> what? Like, oh, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind because I'm saying to myself, at some point, the games that I'm watching and I'm investing my time and energy, there's got to be some carryover. I know it worked last year. It's not working this year. Can you meet me in the middle and play some guys in the top of the order, Estrada or whomever, Flores, who are in form and lower some of these other guys who aren't? Lamont Wade is an example. It's driving Giants fans crazy. Well, look, the bottom line is this. This is true in any facet of life. If you convince somebody of something, right? If you went to one of our bosses and, and said, I got this guy and you got to hire him. Yeah. He's got to be a producer or he's an editor or he's a whatever. He's yeah. going to, I'm telling you, this is, he is awesome. And they hire him. And then that first week, that person keeps showing up for work late. What do you, you're going to be furious. The boss is going to be furious. You convinced us of something last year. You convinced us, mm. and therefore, here's why this is important, because not everybody's going to be right all the time. And last year was last year. But then when you didn't upgrade in the offseason, when you said, and they did repeatedly, this was out loud and a direct quote, we think our players are better than our fans think they are. And you have to be right. 
Yeah. You have to be right. If the other teams are all going to go spend tons of money on great players and you're telling us, no, 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 I, our players are, are, are two, but they're really good. And I know a lot of them had nice seasons last year, yeah. Wade, whatever. Yes. You have to be right. Yeah. You have to be right. And, and all of those guys, they've all had bad seasons. Yeah, they have. And it feels to me as emotional as we get in football, as emotional as we get in basketball, there are emotional ties to baseball. The grind, the way you're watching it as a fan, and I guess guys on the team, because there's so much can happen in a game, in an inning. You know what I mean? And, like, I think we've lost the human touch element. Uh, uh, Slater's a great example. It feels to me, Slater, right now on this team, given where they're at, needs to be playing every single day. I don't care what his splits are against lefties and righties. And He is one of your best outfielders. You got to find a way to put him in the lineup every single day. But they want to pick and choose when and where they use him. And it worked last year. He had a ton of pinch hit home runs that were perfect and timely and everything. Right now, none of these guys that you're pinch hitting for are delivering. Just play the guy. You, you got to abort a strategy that's not working in real time for the greater good. And it feels like they're hell-bent on process over results, and I get it, but the results are so bad, you got to deviate from the process. Yep, yep. I, I agree with you, and by the way, I think they know that, and they will. Like, I do believe a big part, uh, I hope and pray, a big part of their off-season evaluation is going to be themselves. And, and also saying, look, even if we wanted to do it uh, this way again next year, even if we wanted to, we can't. No, we can't. And so we're going to have to we're going to have to deviate from the original plan a little bit uh, because they feel the drum beat as well. With Joe Shasky, it's Mark Willard on Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys. We're with you twice a week. The uh, the Giants podcast for the Giants fan by the Giants fan. We ask you to rate, review and subscribe. Yeah. All right. 